Dasha Hao again, my friends. That's right, my Chinese is limited. Welcome to this video on the spear units and polearm units of Total War Three Kingdoms. The previous video was on all the melee infantry, that is, all the units of the purple color coding, mostly recruited by Sentinels. This one is going to be about all the units that are of the green color coding, which is spear, glaive, and halberd infantry, mostly recruited by champions. So, with that said, do expect a lot of these units to be very similar. Their role is all kind of the same. Some units are just upgraded versions of the previous ones. And you know, they're all meant to be the same kind of units. And one final thing I will mention before we begin is the changes to Three Kingdoms and the Anti-Large system, as the game doesn't really tell you about it very well, as usual. In previous Total Wars, we had the Bonus versus Large stat, which seems to have gone away. We now have Charge Reflection on these Spear-type units, which means when a unit is braced or just stood still, they'll reflect the damage back at their attacker, which only works against large units, so cavalry. Meaning that you never, ever, ever want to charge your cavalry into a braced spear-type unit, because they will absolutely destroy you. Unless it's from the back or sides, of course. So if you've been charging your cavalry into braced spear units, thinking you can just get a little bit of a cycle charge, just to do a little bit of damage like in previous Total Wars, and then finding that your cavalry is getting utterly murdered, that's why. Charge Reflection. Anyway, so. So first up, Peasant Band, and guess what? They suck. Although they do have a good amount of armor piercing damage. So if you can get them braced and a cavalry charges into them, they'll do their fair amount of damage. They're of course very cheap, so gonna be a good starter unit, but you're gonna wanna replace them pretty quickly because most of their stats are pretty poor. And then one of your early mainstay units, G Militia. They're listed as an all-rounder unit, as they can do a little bit of everything, sort of. They got some armor-piercing damage, they got some normal damage, don't have much melee defense or any missile defense, but they do have a fair bit of armor and morale. So they're going to be great at stopping cavalry, they've got that charge reflection, and they'll be able to hold their own against lesser melee infantry. But personally, I'd keep them as an anti-large unit primarily. And then the upgraded version in G Infantry. They're very much the same, just with more armor and a little bit more morale, making them better at surviving. But a more notable thing they have over G Militia is that they can use advanced formations, such as Spear Wall or Hollowed Square, which can definitely be useful. So you'll probably want to upgrade your G Militia to G Infantry once you can afford it. But again, primarily decent anti-large. And when you've got even more money, you're going to want to upgrade to the heavy G Infantry who obviously have way more armor, they've got better morale, but their attack damage is pretty much the same, so their damage output will be similar, but they're going to be much better at holding and surviving than any of the other G units, even 50 cents. They may make a good holding front line because of their armor, but like all of these G units, they are susceptible to missiles, so don't let them get blasted. And then on to Spear Warriors, who are kind of the upgraded version of Peasant Band, as they have a decent amount of armor piercing damage, but still pretty crappy melee evasion. They've got fair armor on and decent morale, so they can play their role well enough, which is said to be anti-cavalry, judging by the unit card, but honestly their stats are pretty much the same as G Infantry, except they have a higher melee charge bonus, which is kind of weird considering they're supposed to be anti-cavalry. You definitely don't want to charge them into cavalry or you're not going to get your charge reflection. I guess if they can flank somebody, that charge bonus will be handy. And to our first polearm unit with a shield, Spear Guard. Similar to the Spear Warriors, they just of course have the shield to protect them from missiles and to help them survive a bit better generally. They have mostly armor piercing damage, and again, best off trying to get after the cavalry, but they can take on some other spear type units or melee infantry if need be. So they may be better off more up front as they have the shield to protect from missiles, while your unshielded spear units may be better towards the back of the army. And then we've got Heavy Spear Guards, who, you've guessed it, are holding a door. Hodor, if you will. Which obviously gives them much better missile block chance, as well as a bit more armor and morale. So very much just the upgraded Spear Guards overall. Same role, if you could put them in a Spear Wall, they may be really good at defending and holding out for a long time, given the size of that door. So again, better against a lot of missiles, good at taking down cavalry. And finally, to something different, Azure Dragons, Heavy Glaive and Bow Infantry. 
These boys can dish out more damage in melee, although mostly non-armor piercing. They've got plenty of armor, of course, great melee evasion, and good morale. So these are one of our first elite type units. They have charge reflection, so they can be an anti-cavalry unit. They're good in melee, so they can take on melee infantry. They have the bow, so they can be archers if they want to. And they have their unique stance, where some of them will kneel down in front with the spears protecting, while the rest of them will be archers in the back. So a very good all-rounder unit for just taking on everyone. Armor-piercing missiles, though, will put them down. Protectors of Heaven, another elite unit, this time more for the front line. With their great armor, great melee evasion, great ranged evasion, and great morale, they're pretty tough and good at staying in the fight. Not to mention that they're disciplined and cause and are immune to scare. Damage-wise, they have mostly non-armor piercing damage, but some armor piercing damage as well. So slightly better against those softer targets, but they can take on anyone really. Gonna be one of the more dominant units in the later game. And then a unique unit for Zhang Yan. Black Mountain Outlaws. These are very much your typical lightly armoured spear unit. Lots of armour piercing weapon strength primarily, and decent melee evasion which is a little bit rare for these units. And being of the Black Mountain, they wouldn't be complete without scare and guerrilla deployment, so they can deploy outside of the usual deployment zone at the start of the battle. They lack any kind of missile defence though, especially with no armour, so they will get shredded by missiles pretty easily, and you'll find them running for the Black Mountains because they have pretty low morale. Still an anti-cav unit primarily, but with some nice little touches. And then we have the Warriors of Yi. These are a unique unit for Yuan Shao and maybe others, and are basically a fancy version of Yi infantry. They've got very similar stats, but way better morale overall. They're also disciplined, so they won't lose morale if their general dies, and they're immune to scare. So they're similar to the G infantry, they're going to be good at taking on cavalry or maybe other kinds of infantry, but they do have those little traits that make them stand out a little bit. And another unique unit for Yuan Shao, the Defenders of Hei Bei. While listed as an all-rounder, they can do well against cavalry of course, but they've got a decent charge bonus so they could charge into infantry and do a fair bit of damage as well to light or heavily armoured infantries. They've got a lot of armour themselves and decent morale, but are a little bit on the slow side and have no missile defence. So with all that, they could make a good frontline unit, albeit those missiles could be a problem, but they can charge into infantry, they could take the cavalry charges if need be, and with all that armour, are going to be fairly tough and will survive pretty well. And then a couple of unique units for Liu Biao and maybe someone else as well, the Infantry of Jing. These are very similar to Spear Guard, just with a fair amount more melee evasion, which doesn't sound like much of a change, but it really is for a spear unit because it means they can stand up better against other kinds of infantry or cavalry for that matter, as the fight wears on. And if you need more door salesmen in your army, then the Imperial Defenders will answer the call. These are very similar to Heavy Spear Guard, of course, just again with better melee evasion. And you know what I'm going to say, it's going to make them better at surviving and fighting for longer. Similar role to the usual units, just better and a little bit tougher. So there you go all the spear type or polearm units for the main warlords in Total War Three Kingdoms. Hopefully this will help you differentiate them a little bit. As I say, a lot of them are all part of the same group, they're just upgraded versions of each other. Ultimately, they're all going to be doing the same thing and will do that role equally well, defending against the cavalry. Learning to use all the different formations of these kinds of units though is where they can really shine with the turtles, circles, squares, whatever. Different formations can make these units much, much stronger. But that's a different video for a different day. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the future. That's right, we'll keep it English at the end of this one.